What's happening? What's good? Morning, everyone. Um, Want to welcome you all this morning. It's Valley Fermit. And if you would like to rise as we go to our first song and as we enter worship.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's so good to be back. I've been on holidays. I've been away for a few weeks. Like, you know what? And I really, really miss looking at you guys. Isn't that terrible? <laughs> I'm sure you didn't miss looking at me as much. <laughs> but listen, it's absolutely fantastic to be here on a Sunday morning in Ballyfermer Community Church. Welcome to all those who are joining us online. There's still quite a few people joining, and it's great to have you online, but we'd love to have you in fellowship. Please, if there's any opportunity to come down and join with us, please do. Um, we did a prayer time this morning, and I really enjoyed the prayer time. It was fantastic, and uh, Abby was leading, and she just reminded me straight away. The very first words out of her mouth reminded me of the God that we have. You know, that we're, we're all of us, our purpose and our walk and every little inch and ability that we have is actually for the Lord, our Savior. It's for him and all the glory to be him. And one of the verses that I had on my phone, I store up verses every now and then, and it was this one here. Whatever work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ your servant, and that's in Colossians. And what a lovely verse it is, like, you know, and it just reminds us that everything we do whether it's in school, at home, in work, whatever it is, wherever we are, every little thing that we do, we do for the Lord our God. That's what's important. Uh, Martina was praying then, and she was talking about the circumstances and the situations in the world right now. And you know, yeah, you, we look at what's happening here in Ballyfermot and Cherry Orchard in our local community. It's horrendous. And we look across the world, and we see what's going on there. It's horrendous. But you know what? We live with hope. We live with peace. We live with joy. We trust in a Lord who is bigger than all of that. Now, one of the verses, and it says here, is anyone among you in trouble? Uh, last week, I was in a bit of trouble now. I got a nasty, nasty bug coming back off the holiday. I didn't know whether I'd be able to get out of bed for a couple of days. Uh, but you know what it says? If any among you are in trouble, let them pray. If anybody is happy, let them sing songs of joy. And that's, that's just, even those two lines, it just tells us how we should live our lives. If you are in trouble, pray to the Lord your God. He knows you individually, each one of us. He knows our circumstances and our situations. And you pray to the Lord your God because you know that the promise is that he will look after you. And when you are happy, sing praise. And I've just as soon as we came into the room here and the worship team started, and we absolutely love our worship team. You can, you can smile. <laughs> I love our worship teams. Uh, we, we have every week a different group of people up here. You know, one or two of them are fairly consistent and here all the time. Other people join in, other people come along. But you know what? They're singing their hearts to the Lord our God. And as soon as they do it, I just, it just lifts me so much. It just lifts me immediately. I just get, I just get transported into that place of worship to the Lord our God. Because it doesn't matter what the situation or circumstances is. Our God loves us. And because he loves us, we love him. So we're just going to go back into that time of worship now. Over the next worship song, we lift the offering as well, just to be prepared. And, uh, you know, just open your hearts, your minds, and just give yourselves to the Lord your God in this space at this time. Amen. Thanks very much.
amazing grace. What an amazing grace to have a father who loves us so much to lay his life down for us. Oh, hallelujah. I'm so glad that I am a Christian. I am a believer because there is nothing in this world that will take Jesus' place in my life. Oh, hallelujah. We're just going to come around the Lord's table. Um, and, you know, this worship song actually, you know, it does help in terms of knowing the, the type of father that we do have. I'm just going to quickly read. Can I ask the ushers, please, if you can start, you know, uh, distributing the, the emblem. I'm going to read from the book of Luke 22, verse 14 to 19, and it reads, when the, when the hour had come, he sat down and the 12 apostles with him. Then he said to them, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it amongst yourself. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body, which is given to which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. It's just so amazing when we look at that verse, especially the last sentence there, in do this in remembrance of me. There is actually a difference between remembrance and reminder. Remembrance means you do because you haven't forgotten. Whereas reminder, you do so that you don't forget. So when we're, you know, sitting at the Lord's table to have communion, we're actually doing because we haven't forgotten Jesus' life. And Jesus, when he broke the bread, we do know that Jesus is the bread that sustains us. And he sustains us in, even in John chapter 6. It says, Jesus says that he is the bread of life. So when we look at the life of Jesus, we don't only focus on his death. We look at his life, we look at his death, and we look at his resurrection. So today I'm just going to talk briefly while they're sharing. I'm not going to take too much of, of your time. I actually want you to reflect on the life of Jesus. Because we need to emulate Jesus' life. And this morning's devotion, I was you know, listening to, to today's passage and it's in first john verse two chap i mean chapter two verse six and it says he who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked so if we claim that jesus abides in us the other side of it is that we have to walk in the same way he did you know that he walked so but as christians we all make these claims but the question is, are we claiming and living or are we claiming and deceiving ourselves? So I'm not saying this to condemn anyone or to make judgment, but it's actually an invitation. So what I'm actually saying today, what I'm sharing today was what I got from today. This is exactly what today's morning devotion that I listened to. I'm just repeating the same thing word for word, maybe with one or two words of my own, but it's the same thing. Um, and it says, you know, what does it mean for you to say that, the, to say, Lord, all that I claim of you, may I leave that out in honor and glory of you. And may my claiming match my living, and my living match my claiming. So when we do claim that Jesus abides in us and we want to live the same life, we want to walk the way he walked, the way he lived, how we fellowship with his disciples, you know, his kindness, his love for others when he was alive, when he lived, are we say, when we're saying that he abides in us, are we doing the same thing? Are we tr even trying to do the same thing or we're just claiming, yeah, you know, Jesus abides in me, he abides in me, but then 
the way you live your life doesn't reflect that walk or it doesn't reflect that claim. So I want to encourage us today to actually integrate these two things. So when we do claim that Jesus abides in us, we should endeavor to live the way Jesus did. And when we do this, I pray that we will be able to integrate these two and we will be able to continue to live as Jesus did. Like I said, it's an invitation for us all, you know, not to condemn anyone, but again, to reflect on your lifestyle, on the way you're living. Are you living for Christ? Are you doing the same thing? Are you being kind to your neighbors? Are you doing what you're supposed to be doing the way Jesus did? Or are you just claiming that Jesus abides in you, but your life doesn't reflect that? So it's something for us all to reflect on this morning. Um, and if you feel, or you, during that reflection, you feel that things aren't matching, maybe it's time for you to invite Jesus, you know, through his grace and his mercy to help us live the way he did. So I would ask that we take the cup and we drink together, and then the bread together. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because we've been able to sit together with you to share a meal. We're doing this because we know we serve a living God. We're not sharing this meal or sitting at the table with a God that does not exist or does not respond. We know that you are a living God and you are a loving Father. Help us, Father, Lord, to be able to match and live the way that you lived, O oh Lord, that when we look at our lives in every aspect, O oh Lord, whichever way or whatever aspect of our lives does not match with our claims, knowing that we, you do abide in us, help us, Father, to change our ways, O oh Lord, so that our lives will reflect you, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus, thank you, Abby. The kids are going to leave us at this time. So if you would like to head upstairs with Esther, that would be great. Just over on this side for any of you that wouldn't know that. Maybe we can give a round of applause to the kids as they go. We pray you have an amazing time together. Amen, amen. Well, good morning, almost afternoon, everyone. Everyone doing okay? Yeah. We've almost made it through September, so here we go. <laughs> Brilliant. A couple of weeks ago, we kicked off a bit of an introduction to this series. See yourself as God sees you. See yourself as God sees you. So many Christians at times are walking through life with the wrong view of ourselves. Would you agree? In our heads, we have thoughts and opinions running around that are not a reflection of what God's word says about us or what God's opinion is of us. So we're going to walk through a number of topics that are designed to help us see ourselves as God sees us. Rather than me thinking, I'm this way because I was born in Ireland, or I'm this way because I was born in Nigeria, or rather than me thinking, I'm this person because of my family tree or the environment I grew up in, or whatever your story might be, maybe we could shift our focus to truly consider who does God say that I am? How does God see me? Because we just might find that he sees something different than we do in ourselves at times. One of the things I've been most conscious of growing up, especially as a teenager, was my voice. I always had this desire to sound a bit more like Morgan Freeman. Is anyone with me? Okay. Or Moses from Valley Furman. Um, but that was not the case. That I should have this big deep voice or something like this, you know. And I'm letting you into my head a little bit so that you can see that you're not the only one with thoughts like these that can run away from themselves at times. 
When we worked in New York, we did Sunday school on the streets, and we used these box trucks, and the side of the truck came down to make a stage, and we were able to do a Sunday school program on the street, which was amazing. And one day, I was visiting one of the families there in New York, and I knocked on the door, and the voice behind the door said, who is it? which is pretty regular in an apartment block in New York City. And I said the name of the Sunday school. And this lady whipped the door open. And she said, I would know that voice anywhere. She says, I hear you every Tuesday talking about Jesus from the speakers down below. And it was probably the first moment in my life that something clicked. And God went, I gave you that voice. As much as you want to sound like Morgan Freeman, I gave you that voice for a reason. I had missed how God seen me and what he'd given me and the reason he had given me what he had, that it was distinctive in a way that he would use it for different reasons and different purposes. And it's just amazing, isn't it? But I wonder today how many of these examples are in our lives We don't like the way we look. We don't like the way we sound. We're insecure about our hair or lack of. We're insecure about our ability to communicate what we are feeling. We think too much about what could have been. We think too much about longing that things would look different, be different, whatever. And if only we could see ourselves as God sees us. Today we're going to look at seeing ourselves as God sees us, as citizens of heaven. We're going to turn to Philippians chapter 1 and verses 27 to 30. If you're turning with me, feel free. In the New Testament, the book of Philippians, there should be some verses hopefully on the screen. And I'm going to read Philippians chapter 1 and verses 27 to 30. And this is what it says. Just one thing. As citizens of heaven, live your life worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then whether I come and see you or I'm absent, I will hear about you, that you're standing firm in one spirit, in one accord, contending together for the faith of the gospel, not being frightened in any way by your opponents. This is a sign of destruction for them, but of your salvation, and this is from God. For it has been granted to you on Christ's behalf, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for him, since you're engaged in the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I have. And if you wouldn't mind flipping over a page or two, it depends on your Bible, chapter 3 and verses 18 to 21. So this little letter to the Philippians, there's only four chapters in it, chapter 3 there, verses 18. For I have often told you, and I say again with tears, that many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction, their God is their stomach, their glory is in their shame, and they are focused on earthly things. Our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly wait for a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humble condition into the likeness of his glorious body by the power that enables him to subject everything to himself. And praise God for his word today. Amen. A different translation states, above all, you must live as citizens of heaven. And Paul is trying to describe something to the church in Philippi that is life transforming. You're not just citizens of earth or of a particular country or location. There is so much more to your citizenship. You are citizens of heaven. And the same is today. Citizenship is a massive thing. I grew up in a strange location where I could have a British passport and an Irish passport. Then I married an American and I lived in Russia and my in-laws lived in Denmark. Very aware, as many of you are too, of citizenship. Our family has been involved in these matters for years. There's always a visa for something and all the rest. And your passport, right, it represents the country where you were born or came from or have become a citizen of. There are typically characteristics, aren't there, of citizens of a particular country. And then there can be challenges for people of different countries who become citizens of a new country and all the different variations that there are on citizenship and what that means. Why? 
because we all have culture, don't we? And laws and assumed behavior. Then there's food and attitudes to life and parenting. There's views on death. There's views on what is right and what is wrong. And they differ depending on countries and citizenships and all of those things. And while I actually love the conversation and love learning from people, especially from a different culture or citizenship than me, I love learning about all those things. I'm not sure at times I hear the people of God talk openly enough or often enough about their citizenship in heaven. How many of those conversations really have we had with each other? We, we might have interesting conversations about our citizenship in general, but what about our citizenship in heaven? What does that mean? What does that look like? Paul talks about above all you must live as citizens of heaven. Above all of your earthly citizenship, you are a citizen of heaven. He says live a life worthy of your parents' expectations of how a good Irish citizen should live or how a good Ghanaian citizen should live or a good Latin American citizen should live. No. He says, live a life worthy of the gospel of Christ. Why? Because you are a citizen of heaven. Turn to someone beside you and say, you are a citizen of heaven. If you believe in Jesus Christ today and you're following him, you are a citizen of heaven. So Paul talks about, doesn't he, standing together. You can put those verses up from Philippians 1 if you don't mind, please. Standing together, one spirit, one purpose, fighting together for the faith, which is the good news. He talks about being in the same struggle together. We don't stand together in God as a bunch of random people from different places. Of course, that is true also. But we also stand together in one spirit. One purpose, fighting together for the faith as citizens of the same place, and that is heaven. In Philippians 3, as we read, Paul talks about the enemies of the cross of Christ who think only about life here on this earth. Isn't that interesting? There's something for us to meditate on and think about this week, that the enemies of Christ think only about life here on this earth. But we stand together as citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives. We are eagerly awaiting a savior from there. Today, church, we are not just Irish or Indian or African or Latin American or Asian. Most importantly, we are citizens of heaven. And my prayer is today that we catch something more of the significance of that as we head into our week. Because it is mind-blowing. We get people spending, don't we, billions of euros just for one trip to the moon. And we are actually citizens of heaven. Think about that today. What does this mean? Some of what makes life more difficult than how we see ourselves is because we get caught up, don't we, of thinking of life only here on this earth. The stuff that's in front of us that we can see, of, of course, and we understand why we get caught up in that. I'm not as good as a person because my job isn't as good as that other person's. We've all been guilty of saying things like that, thinking things like that. Well, I don't have as much money as that person. I don't have the status that that other person has. If only I had their life or their family or their childhood or whatever it might be. But actually, we stand today as followers of Jesus, as citizens of heaven. See, I have an assignment from the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. So actually my financial status here on earth or my rule or whatever that might look like or my job or what my story or whatever. Actually, I stand as a citizen of heaven. Life on this earth is not the only thing that matters whenever we think about this. And my assignment is not your assignment. It's not someone else's assignment. And when it comes to finance, my daddy owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Every good thing comes from him. So earthly financial status doesn't matter as much as we think it does when we are citizens of heaven. Even if life here on earth has been particularly difficult, and I'm conscious of that as a pastor, that for many people it has been, or that some people have had particularly difficult seasons, and other people have simply had difficult lives here on earth. How reassuring is it, though, that life will come to an end someday 
but it's not over for us as citizens of heaven who will have eternal life forever and ever, and it will be so much better with Jesus. Does anyone agree with that? We are citizens of heaven. So let me make a couple of quick points today. And the first one is this. Citizens of heaven live as citizens of heaven. That's what the verse says, right? Live your life worthy of the gospel of Christ. I mentioned already all countries have expectations for their citizens and how they should live their lives. God is no different. As citizens of heaven, it's not just about living a good life here on earth, but it's about living our lives worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Honesty matters. Integrity matters. Love matters. Giving our lives away for his glory matters. What does Romans 12 and verses 1 to 2 say? These will be familiar verses to many of you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true worship. Do not be conformed to this age or the patterns of this world, other versions would say. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. Do not be conformed to the patterns of this world. Don't live with only the things of this world in mind, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. See, citizens of heaven don't live primarily as citizens of their country or citizens of this earth or to the patterns of this world, but they live a life worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's something we want to wrestle with as we step into our week. Secondly, citizens of heaven join together with other citizens. Philippians 1, then whether I come and see you or an absent, I will hear about you that you're standing firm in one spirit, in one accord, contending together for the faith of the gospel, not being frightened in any way by your opponents. When we lived in New York, there was an international staff team. There were people from over 60 nations at any time serving God together, which was both amazing and sometimes challenging. But I, I enjoyed experiencing other people's cultures and, and learning about where they were coming from. I especially enjoyed experiencing their food. Just throwing that out there. If you ever want to cook for me, you're more than welcome. But, <laughs> right? Amazing experiences. But every now and again... The British and Irish would still get together to make themselves a fry for breakfast, right? Because there's just something to about something you're familiar about or that you can join together with people in that draws us together. Isn't that true? We know that to be true. Or we would share some of the goodies that some of our parents had sent from home. So every couple of months, my mommy used to send me Percy Pigs from Marks and Spencer's. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> and I loved it, and so did plenty of other people, right? But I remember when a new Irish person used to arrive as an intern at the ministry, I would find them, and I would talk to them about home, and I would introduce them to the things in New York that were maybe a bit different, just drawn to them for whatever reason because of where I came from. In fact, when I first arrived, it was late and everyone was sleeping my first time that I was there. And I managed to end up in the same bunk as a guy called Aaron from Bal Doyle. Can you imagine, right? And so <laughs> and lots of people from all different countries and he was already asleep and we, I managed to find that bunk. Do you know, it's normal, isn't it, to join together with other citizens, people that we can relate to or that we came from and all of those different scenarios. People talk about how you can be a Christian and not go to church and not have fellowship with other Christians. But it's not normal and it's not biblical for citizens of heaven to try to do this alone. The expectation of the New Testament is clear that we would stand firm in one spirit that in one accord, that we would contend together for the faith of the gospel, not something that we can do all by ourselves, actually. Citizens of heaven join together with other citizens. I'm sure some of you have had the experience as well, that you meet someone random, and they maybe ask you or you ask them, are you, are you a Christian? Because there's something 
about that, isn't there? That we know that we're standing together. We stand firm in one accord, one vision, contending for the faith of the gospel. Citizens of heaven join together with other citizens. Thirdly today, citizens of heaven look for help from their home. One of the points of citizenship and a passport is that we know where to get our help from if something goes wrong, right? There are embassies all over the world in all the major cities to assist people who get into some bother while they're away from home. There are governments advocating on behalf of their citizens who are in prison in other countries and all of those things. There's assistance for people who get stuck in various situations. And praise the Lord for good government and good policies that help us in various ways every day. But above all, we are citizens of heaven. Today, Bally Fermit, we don't look first and foremost to the government for help. Martina prayed it this morning in our prayer meeting. Psalm 121. I lift my eyes towards the mountains or the hills, as you might know it. Where will my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Guess what? Why do you think it says that he's the maker of heaven and earth? Because he's bigger than all the governments, right? He's bigger than any help any embassy can ever give you. Citizens of heaven are able to look for help from their home. We get to look to the Lord. In the middle of such an interesting time in world history that we've been through these last number of years, I continue to be in today with lots of uncertainties about the future. We don't know what Christmas is even going to look like, never mind next year. And lots of people are feeling it, aren't they? Even in the church. And, and I get it. I completely get it. But where do we look for our help from? The maker of heaven and earth. Not for someone else to fix everything for us. But where is God in all of this? What is he saying? As you stare at your bank balance, you don't need to wait for the government. Look to the Lord. You are a citizen of heaven. As you think about all the things wrong in your life at this time, you don't need to wait for your boss to intervene or wish for a different life. Look to the Lord. You are a citizen of heaven. Cast all your cares and anxieties on him because he cares. You don't have to go to this embassy and hope maybe they'll be able to help or they'll even care about your situation. He cares. That you can be guaranteed. As you cast your cares on him, whatever's going on, he definitely cares. Number four, and lastly, citizens are longing for home. Abby first moved to Ireland 14 years ago, and she doesn't long for home every day. But it doesn't matter how long you're away. There are just certain moments, aren't there, where you think, I would really like this food or this place, or I'd like the trees to look a bit more brown and yellow and <laughs> in autumn, and just things from home, right? As citizens of heaven, we're actually not looking for perfect lives here on this earth in this temporary arrangement and assignment we are longing for home we are eagerly awaiting a savior we are longing for home and heaven is our home under harmony could you come and play please i pray that we can see ourselves today as God sees us as citizens of heaven, living as citizens, living lives worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We live in this world and there's pressures and there's all sorts of different things and, and many of which we obviously have to go with. But as long as we don't miss in that, that we're citizens of heaven, that we've got lives to live that are worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that when we do, as we so often see in so many people's lives, it makes a difference. Not just on the earth or not just in the natural, but in the spiritual. It makes a difference in the kingdom of God. Living as citizens and joining together with other 
citizens. So important and so amazing too when we see this happening, right? And it goes wrong at times and things get messed up. And let's be honest, we're dealing with people and that's part of it. But we live with other citizens. We're drawn together to be part of one spirit and one purpose, contending together for the faith of the gospel. Living as citizens and looking for our help from the one who can really help his citizens. The maker of heaven and earth. And we're living as citizens and longing for our true home. Where we will spend eternity together forever. And most importantly with him. I wonder church could we spend less time this week thinking about our lives here on earth. I know it's a challenge to I know when the pressure's on and things are happening and we feel squeezed and whatever. Of course. I wonder, could we spend less time? I wonder how much time we really give to thinking about heaven, to thinking about eternity, to thinking and longing for that place and that day and all of that. More time living as citizens of heaven with eternity in mind. And we just might find that seeing ourselves in this way, right? Can I say it with this series too? If you need to write this on a mirror, and that's helpful, then you have full permission to do that. <laughs> Don't tell the children. But <laughs> the grown-ups can. Take out a Sharpie or whatever <laughs> and write on your mirror, I am a citizen of heaven. If you need a badge or something that helps you all of this week to remember this, and to live this out, then let's do that, okay? I am a citizen of heaven. Whatever I walk into this week, good and bad, and there will probably be both, anyone else? <laughs> I am a citizen of heaven. And all that that means, whatever you have to do, if we can begin to see ourselves more as God sees us, it really helps us through this journey and through our seasons of life here on this earth. To God be the glory. Amen. Let's stand together. Let's pray. The worship team are going to come and we're going to continue to worship with a couple of songs. So I just encourage us today to enter into that as well and make the most of that opportunity. It's not so often that we get to worship together. So we want to make the most of these moments as well. Let's pray together. Father God, it is the longing of my heart today that these people in front of me and those that couldn't make it today for whatever reason would see more of how you see us. God, we're very aware of the ways in which that doesn't line up. How we see ourselves at times is so far away from how you see us, from what you've said in your word, from the things that you have spoken over our lives. So we're asking for your help today to see ourselves as you see us, to see ourselves as the citizens of heaven that you have called us, that you have named us, that you have labeled us, that you have given us permission for. Would you help us today, God, to live lives that are worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Would you help us in the midst of this to look to you for our help? You're the first embassy call. You're the first place that we go as things go wrong, as we think about the months ahead and the uncertainties of what's happening all around the world still at this time. Where does our help come from? It comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. God, would you help us so that we can overflow and help others this Christmas and this winter season and all that's coming? Would you help us as a church to be able to lift our focus even 
to see you, to see the help that you're offering us, whatever that looks like, that we can even help each other. Father God, would you help us as citizens of heaven to live as citizens with one another, standing together, united in spirit and purpose, and contending together for the faith of the gospel. And Holy Spirit, I ask at this moment that you would teach us what it means to long for home. Give us more revelation of what it truly means to live with eternity in mind. Father God, in this moment, I just want to pause for a second. Aware that some people in this room more than likely have spent years of their lives despising things about themselves and about the way that you made them. The same way that I was so unhappy with my voice, which is probably the thing you've used the most all these years. Father God, I just pray for a redeeming of those areas in our lives that we would be able to celebrate, God, how you have made us for whatever reason and whatever purpose that you gave us. Those things that maybe we've spent years being unhappy with, that we would be able to see ourselves as you see us, created in your image. Wow. So Holy Spirit, we invite you into this moment. Would we open up ourselves to all that he wants to say and do in our lives? And Father God, just that picture this week of all the citizens of heaven and different parts of this city living their lives. Would you use us? our citizenship see your kingdom established see the gospel spread to be used by you in every big way and particularly in every small way you want to use us
Thanks very much, everybody. Oh, thanks, Craig. That was a fantastic message. Really, really appreciated that. And the worship team, can we give them another round of applause? I, I actually don't want the service to end. I, I listen to this and I could go again. I could actually, we could start again and just go again. And I would actually be really happy with it, you know. Um, now, I was supposed to do the announcements earlier when I was doing them, so I'm going to do the announcements now. I'll just make sure that we uh, have it correct. And uh, the guys will put some stuff up on the screens, I think. But we'll kick off. Pre service prayer takes place every Sunday at 10 o'clock here in the mana shop. Um, it's a powerful time just to engage with each other and just to see what the Lord has. And, you know, even this morning, there's so many messages came out today in that three things particularly that came out in the prayer, pre-service pre prayer. And we've had them confirmed so many times throughout today's service. It's absolutely been amazing uh, in the worship and in the preaching and in the messages that people have. It's just, it's powerful, the communion, you know. Um, and it just shows you that the Lord is there with us at all times you know we just have to open our heart and 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 be present in that space so everybody is welcome pre-service prayer is not just for one or two people or three people like come along if you want to be part of what's happening before we get into the service just come along you're more than welcome uh, and then you can help us to set up for the beaten as well so there is a little trick catch to it um tuesdays 11 o'clock the women's bible study with coffee and cake do you bring cake nora Oh, I didn't know that. I might have to drop in myself then. Uh, <laughs> women's Bible study, coffee and cake at 11. And that's followed then at 12 o'clock by intercessory prayer. And um, I'm not going to share exactly what happened. But once again, this week, I got a message off somebody telling me about a miraculous intervention of God. And it's just amazing. It's absolutely amazing. The guys at the intercessory prayed for something to happen. And guess what? It happened. And what happened was amazing because nobody expected it. But we can expect it with our God. Amen. Yeah, amen. So 12 o'clock intercessory prayer. Come and intercede on behalf of each other and the country and the world. And you know what? It's just powerful things happen. Uh, Wednesdays, 8 p.m. Bible study has resumed. I think we're up to the week three now. Uh, so Wednesday, 8 o'clock, it's on Zoom. You can take it from your house. Uh, we're going to be doing Acts chapter 15. Um, and it's a fantastic time to get together, look at the Bible, look at a particular chapter, and just get into that. Uh, you know what? When we get into the Word, it's just powerful. I love the idea that it's a living world. And it doesn't matter how many times you read it. You come back to it again, and you read it again. And you know what? There's something fresh in it every time that something opens up the, the holy spirit uses the word to tell us something about what's happening right now and something that god wants us to do right now it never fails it's absolutely powerful and amazing come along wednesdays on zoom eight o'clock so we're getting through this now thursdays 8 p.m holy spirit night uh, brian has been holding us together there for the last couple of weeks it's got back back up in full swing um, it's powerful time of worship and just opening up a space here in the building to see what the Holy Spirit wants us to do, has to say to us. Um, it's powerful to hear what other people tell you. Um, people that on a Sunday might sit down in the congregation, they don't have anything to say, you know, they're quiet, they're just listening, they're hearing, they're taking it all in. And then Thursday night comes along and they stand up and they bring a message from the Lord and it's powerful. And it's really great because it gets confirmed then by somebody else in the meeting. And that, and, and that just whole thing of the momentum sometimes that the Holy Spirit gives to one person speaking out what they've heard and somebody else confirming that and somebody else adding into that. And you know what? Sometimes that Thursday then and it carries through. And then we come along on the Sunday and somebody's bringing the same message on a Sunday as well. And you know the Holy Spirit is joining the dots and doing it for us, you know? Um, so... Great Commission Youth, back up and running, 7 o'clock. It's been powerful. I've heard a couple of good things already today about what ha what's happening. Um, and they have fantastic plans for this season that we're in right now for the youth. And you know what? Um, you look around and you see some of the things that are happening in the community around youth. And it just reminds you how blessed we are, how lucky we are, how thankful we are that we have a situation here in Ballyfermot where the youth can come into a safe 
environment into a safe place where they can come and express what's going on and how they feel and what's happening and look to God's purpose in it and pray with each other. I mean, for the youth to be able to do that here in Ballyfermot, that's beyond everything that I would have hoped for. And I love it. I really do love it. And I would encourage you, if you have youth, if you have old people, if you have, you know, uh, people in the community that are your neighbours that you know, maybe connect them in, maybe through Craig or through one of the leaders, and get them to have that conversation and just see what the youth is about. And maybe we can add that in as something else that's happening right now in this building. A safe, clear environment where the message of God is preached amongst the youth. And, uh, you know, I, I see the youth just growing over this last year. And it's absolutely powerful and amazing. And I look forward to each time that they step up and they do something in the church because it's so fresh and it's so raw. It's so natural to them. And I love it because it's absolutely the opposite of what's happening in the world out there. Amen. Um, Elam Academy, it starts on the 26th of October. It's an online training course. Elam Academy has been running for years and years and years and years. Um, I did a module of it there uh, at the start of the year, and it was powerful and really, you know, it's one Monday uh, for about maybe two hours, two and a half hours, and it's quite an intensive look into scripture, uh, theology, things that are happening at the moment. They make it so relevant, and they make it so personal, and, they, and, and the guys that are leading this Elam Academy training they, they've all lived the experience. They've all had such Im, uh, impactful lives. And, you know, they're sharing their experience and their ideas and their thoughts. And they're doing it under the kingdom. It's all about the kingdom. And it's a powerful, powerful tool. And I would encourage anybody that wants to get involved and just to get deeper into it. The, the academy is a fantastic way of doing it. Um, Saturday, the 1st of October... Uh, now, I missed it last week, and I'm raging because well, as soon as I heard about it, and Craig was telling me, uh, Crown Jesus, uh, Mitch, I think, was uh, Mitch was here last week with you, you guys. He was preaching. He shared. Um, he's from Crown Ministry, um, Crown Jesus Ministries, and they are doing an evangelistic training here in Ballyfermot on Saturday, the 1st of October. It's an event from 10 a.m. till 3 p.m., Get down a little bit early. You might get a cup of coffee and a registration before you start. Um, but it's a evangelism training. And, you know, when we look around and we see that we're members of the kingdom, and, you know, like, like every kingdom, we want to see pe our borders expand. We want to see people come in. We love people to join in your kingdom. Um, you know what? Evangelism is all about that, isn't it? It's about just sharing the gospel, speaking to your neighbor, speaking to the person on the street, speaking to whoever and sharing the gospel, and allowing them the opportunity to join the kingdom. Amen. Um, Sunday, the 2nd of October, BCC Vision Afternoon. Uh, after the Sunday service, uh, there's a lunch meeting at 3.30 p.m. So Sunday, the 2nd of October, BCC Vision Afternoon. And uh, you'll need to speak to maybe Craig or one of the leaders about that. Yeah, straight after the service. Straight after the service. Over by half three. So a, bit, a bite to eat, and then we'll have that service. Uh, Zealous Weekend is coming up. There's posters outside on the wall. Uh, it's for all youth aged between 12 and 18. Uh, the weekend is running from the 28th to the 31st of October. Have a look at the poster on the wall outside and give one of us a shout about it. Uh, information cards outside in the foyer there, if you could fill one out, or ideally if you want to scan the QR code, uh, you can put your details on that way. And the WhatsApp groups, if you're not on a WhatsApp group, we have BCC announcements um, where we put up all the events, all the things that are happening. And uh, if you want to be connected in with that, just let us know. Give us your mobile number. We'll get you added onto the group, and you can stay in touch then as things are happening. So, I, uh, okay, one more. Uh, Oh, Gabriel asked me just to mention as well, um, the Vision School, Tuesday the 4th of October at half past six, the, the Vision School is taking place. It's going to be every Tuesday for a period of time, um, and that'll be here in Ballyfermot as well. Uh, Mayan has been with us many times and spoken and preached, and Gabriel just asked us to mention it, um, that they are hoping to have that up and running uh, from Tuesday the 4th of October. Um, they are looking for numbers, and they would like us just to encourage people along the way. So, you know, we've done that now. I'm happy. <laughs> so um, 
That's it for all the announcements. I don't think there's anything else. Uh, there's tea and coffee and refreshments afterwards, and we'd love to fellowship with you. If anybody has any questions, please come and speak to us. Um, and uh, on that note, I'd love to just maybe close in prayer. Um, and just to maybe, if I could, I'm going to share one or two verses here because I just, I, I think it's appropriate. Um, and also, um, just to mention, Martina's going to murder me because I'm taking too long here. But uh, Craig, was, Craig was speaking, the dinner is waiting. <laughs> but Craig was speaking there, and uh, one of the things, two things actually that he had mentioned, it just really struck me as well, just for me personally, and I just wanted to share it quickly, was years and years and years ago, I used to sit down the back over there where Victor and the family sit. And myself, Martina, and our four boys used to sit down there. And I would stand up for the worship, and I loved the worship even back then. Like, these would be early days, you know. And I would stand, and I would sing in my heart. Because all my life, I was told I couldn't sing. All my life, I was told I hadn't got a note in my head. I couldn't carry a tune. And I knew it. They were right. It wasn't that they were telling me a lie. I can't sing. Um, and I was here for years, and I actually met one of, the, one of our elder emeritus, and uh, I was here at a small group meeting with him, and we were all praying, and we were all just chatting away, and I happened to mention about the fact, and you know what he actually said, he turned around and said to me, and I never forget it, and he said to me, you know what, God gave you that voice that you have, who are you to say you can't sing worship and praise to the Lord, and it stuck with me ever since, and you know what, straight after that I started singing quietly at first because I was very embarrassed and very shy and nervous and I, I knew I couldn't sing but you know what now when the worship gets up and moves I just belt it out I want I, I it's the Lord I'm singing to it's the Lord I'm praising it's the Lord I'm worshiping so uh, you know as Craig said it doesn't matter how you think about your own voice it's not about that the Lord wants us to use our voice as it is inside us to speak out his message his love and his glory amen and then the second one was our <laughs> a month ago our 19 year old went on holiday to portugal for the first time ever and we were terrified as you are parents you know and uh, we're thinking about it you know and uh, you know uh, how, how important it is to be <laughs> neither am i <laughs> i i think that's me watch speaking to me <laughs> Martina must have it. Martina must have it tacked. <laughs> but my 19-year-old went on holidays, right, for the first time on his own without his mammy and daddy, and we were terrified. And we thought, okay, cover it in prayer. It'll be fine. No problem. He's going off. He's with his friends. What can happen? Halfway through the holiday, we got a phone call at half seven in the morning from two of his friends to two of us, telling us, "Tigs after being robbed." Now he was fine. Thank God. The Lord looked after him. But his rucksack was stolen, his wallet, his passport, his phone, his watch, everything. Even his T-shirt. Of course, teenagers, what do they do? They go out and spend 40 euro on a T-shirt. I would have went to pennies and got it for 4 euro. <laughs> anyway, everything was robbed. And we're on the phone to his friends. And his friends are telling us, like, you know, he's in a bad way. He's distraught. He doesn't know what to do, blah, blah, blah. So we're trying to help him from here in Ireland. We aged 10 years in one day, I'm telling you now. <laughs> anyway, he goes off. He gets to the authority in the local area, speaks to the police. They do all the letters for him. We get him back to the hotel. He gets a photocopy of the passport because the hotel copies your passport. So he's got a photocopy of the passport. And we're thinking, great. He's got the letter from the police. We're thinking, great, the local authorities had done everything they could do. We thought, that's fantastic. So anyway, this is the Thursday. Monday, he shows up at, Dublin, at the airport in Faro in Portugal. And he gets through the front door, no problem. And then the first authority check, he gets through security, no problem. The local authority paperwork, everything was great, no problem at all. Through security, he's getting in there now. We're getting to the thing. They've had their food. They're all getting ready. They've got their boarding cards checked in. Everything is right. No problem at all. Arrives at the gate to get onto the plane. And they wouldn't let him through because he'd no passport. I was <laughs> just thinking when Craig was preaching there about what it means, that identity, to be part of the kingdom. He had no passport. He was therefore not allowed to get on the plane. He'd gone through all the local authority stuff because he had all the local authority documentation. 
but he didn't have his citizenship, his passport, to say that he could get onto the plane to return to Ireland. Now, we were kind of saying to ourselves here, now, this isn't right. They flew him over there in the first place. They knew who he was. He was in the system. But he didn't have that piece of paper, a passport, to say that he was a member. He was an Irish citizen. He was part of the kingdom. And it just struck me how important it is to know your identity, to know who you are in Christ, to know what kingdom you belong to as Christians. And thank God, and again, this is a, you know, we have a God that loves us and wants us to be part of his kingdom. So finally, Martina and myself, after aging another 10 years on the second day, we finally got through to a girl called Monica over in the Irish Embassy in Portugal. And as soon as we spoke to her, she did everything for us. She took over. She sorted it all out. She got everything. Amazing, amazing person. But what was she? She was a representative of our kingdom, our citizenship, our Irish national state. And she did everything she possibly could. And she got him a temporary 24-hour passport. She sorted it all out. She checked in, did all his paperwork, got him onto the plane. Everything was great, and he arrived home. And we were 20 years older at this stage. <laughs> but <laughs> at least he was home safe, our 19-year-old, our baby of the family. He was home safe, thank God. But it took that person who was there representing our, our citizenship, representing our state, to do that for us in a foreign country, in a foreign place. And, you know... That's where the fellowship also comes in. That as Christians, we have to come together. We have to fellowship with each other. We have to be part of the kingdom for ourselves, but also so that we can show other people the benefits and the joy of being part of something that is so amazing so that they can see the light and come in as well and join into our citizenship. So listen, I've spoken enough, I've spoken, but I just really want to talk and just, we might just stand very quickly and just say a prayer as we leave the building and we go into a time in the week where, you know, Lord, we thank you so much for being citizens of your kingdom, Lord. We thank you so much that you are the authority that we look to, that you are the one who saves, that you are the one who has love and mercy and grace and peace for each and every single one of your citizens, Lord. We just thank you that we are part of that. We thank you that we have the opportunity to step into that every day in every moment. It doesn't matter what's happening in the world. It will be difficult, we know that, but we have peace, love, joy, and hope in you, Lord. And we carry that in us, and we carry that with us, no matter what the world will throw at us, Lord, because the bigger picture is that we are citizens of your kingdom, and you are worth it. You are the Lord Almighty. You are our God and our Savior, and we want to carry that with us at all times. And we give you all the thanks and praise and glory. As we go through this week, Lord, we just look to you in every moment of every day. Amen.